Good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, our speaker is here. Uh, we'll start in a moment. We'll start by exactly at eleven o'clock. I welcome you all. Please be patient. Please wait. We'll start soon. I request participants not to annotate anything on the screen. Dr. Tarun, Dr. Tarun, Dr. Tarun, you are not, I'm not able to hear you. Are you there? Dr. Tarun? Hello. Uh, Dr. Good Tarun, morning. good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? <laughs> good morning. Good morning, sir. So, shall we start, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. So, it's already 11 o'clock uh, and uh, participants have already joined. Many are there on uh, YouTube also. No problem, so, sir. I'm just, we'll start now. Okay. So sure, good sir, morning, sure. all my dear students, friends, speakers, and pharmacy professionals, and all those who have joined us via Zoom and YouTube. I hope that today's session is useful to add value to your life. Most of us have uh, at some of use uh, you know, at our medicines, and many a times these unused and expired medicines remain at home. 
disposing these medicines is a major challenge and not much has been done in this regard uh, mainly due to the lack of clear government guidelines and lack of awareness awareness according to me is one of the most essential aspects of life when i first saw uh, saw a, a facebook post post by dr tarun i was uh, impressed and immediately contacted him he promptly accepted my invite to share his knowledge on unused and expired medicines for a wider benefit to public and our professionals dr tarun currently <coughs> works as an associate professor and head of department at school of pharmaceutical sciences mvn university palwal he earned his graduation and masters in pharmacy uh, specifically pharmaceutics from rajiv gandhi academy of pharmacy mathura a premier institute affiliated to uttar pradesh technical university lucknow he completed his doctorate from mvn university palwal his credentials include more than 50 papers of national and international repute about 25 presentations of scientific papers uh, national conferences seminars with 59 Uh, citations and 5h index and one one uh, i10 index as per google scholar he is in the editorial board of many national and international journals he has to his credit several awards and recognitions from leading associations and societies he has also authored four textbooks as per the new pci syllabus these textbooks are for pharmaceutics physical pharmaceutics practical physical pharmaceutics and human anatomy and physiology he is also involved in various social activities like awareness programs on prevention of uh, prevention and management of various life threatening diseases such as cancer tuberculosis diabetes hypertension he also organizes lot of free health checkup camps in rural areas for the benefit of locals he is a life member of professional bodies like indian pharmacy graduate association ipga association of pharmaceutical teachers in india apti he has 14 plus years of experience in research teaching and administration he has supervised 3 phd and co supervised 15 mpharm projects his area of interest are physical pharmacy pharmaceutical technology community pharmacy and pharmaceutics i welcome dr tarun for this much needed session and request him to take over the session dr tarun the stage is all yours thank you so much uh, thank you so much sir for the wonderful introduction and uh, first of all i would like to express my gratitude uh, to you that you have like uh, chosen me to speak in uh, like uh, speak for the uh, speak for this particular topic uh, like uh, as everybody knows like we have unused and expired medicines at our home like we have one first aid box at home and we don't know actually what to do with these types of medicines although we are pharmacist and uh, we have done b form we have done im form we have done phd also but like many of you are student and many of you are faculty members also but not even a single chapter is there in the curriculum uh, to discuss about the disposal methods of uh, and uh, expired and unused medicines so like uh, it was just a thought process of uh, like uh, two or three members uh, like uh, one is uh, not here uh, one is mr sachin gandhi who is basically co-founder of medicine baba trust medicine baba is basically uh, the person who is involved in such type of activities he basically uh, goes around like all delhi all delhi corner uh, to beg for basically the unused uh, medicines and then he basically uh, deliver all these medicines to the needy person the same thought process we have adopted uh, for that particular thing why he is uh, doing alone this kind of services because we are pharmacists we know like um, very much about these types of things like if uh, there are some problem then as a pharmacist we can categorize all types of medicine if like collected at our center so that thought process will give us a idea and we have initiated that initiated that particular process so uh, without wasting much of the time i would like to uh, share a slide uh, sir this is uh, showing host disabled participant screen sharing would you please uh, i have just enabled it okay i have i have enabled it sir yeah okay okay thank you so much sir yeah please start so like why we are today here to listen about the unused and the expired medicines at home is it uh, visible to everyone sir is it visible sir make it full screen it is visible now it is visible make it full screen 
Okay, okay, just one, just one. Yeah. So, uh, this is again a challenging question. Like, uh, what to do with unused and expired medicines, which is are at home? Basically, like, uh, uh, like everybody knows about this Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Like, uh, our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has initiated this process. And everybody is like uh, having uh, the tendency to clean the top surface of the earth. But we are not thinking about the inner surface of the earth in which like all the contaminated water is going inside the earth. And we, along with all the team members, like uh, you are my team members now because I am presenting in front of you. So I believe like after listening this lecture, uh, you can spread this awareness among all the person which is inside, which is near to your uh, community. So, uh, we, uh, like the mission, or we can say, and the mission statement for this particular event is Swachh Bharat Abhyan, Swachh Bharat Abhyan for the unused and the expired medicines. Here is a small video, actually. Uh, this small video gives you an insight idea, like uh, how they are dangerous uh, for the community, for the aquatic life, and there are some remedial procedures also. And that remedial procedure is not adopted actually in India. But like if we are together, then we can make a change. So here is the video. You can see this is a two minute video only. Unused medicines can spell many things. Risk if they're taken by someone they work with. Accidentally taken by a child or pet. Danger or even death if not used as directed. Unused or expired medicines may be hiding right in your home, in bathrooms, kitchens, bedrooms, purses, and anywhere you store medicines. So why put your family at risk? Safely dispose of unused or expired medicines before they can do harm. There are many ways to get rid of them. The best option is to find a drug take back location. This could be a local pharmacy or a police station. These take-back locations may offer on-site medicine drop-off boxes, mail-back programs, or in-home disposal products. DEA's webpage can help you find a take-back location near you. Just enter your zip code. If you don't have a drug take-back location near you, check the FDA's flush list to see if your medicine is on it. Medicines on the flush list may be especially dangerous with just one dose if they're taken by children, pets, or others in your home. Flushing certain types of medicines, such as opioids, helps keep everyone safe by making sure these powerful drugs are not accidentally or intentionally swallowed, touched, or misused. Remember, don't flush any medicine unless it is on the flush list. If you don't have a drug take back location nearby and your medicine is not on the flush list, you can dispose of it in the trash. For medicines you dispose of in the trash, FDA recommends that you mix them with an unappealing substance such as dirt, cat litter, or used coffee grounds. Don't crush pills. Then place the mixture in a sealed plastic bag before throwing it away. Scratch out personal information from the prescription label on the empty packaging. For complete details and instructions on safe medicine disposal, visit www.fda.gov slash drug disposal. Uh, thank you so much uh, for watching this uh, video. Like this is actually the content of my slide, which I have shown in two minutes. And this is uh, given in the FDA basically website. You can basically scroll down from uh, that particular thing. Now the question is that, like, why there is a prevalence of unused medication at home? Like this is the main problem actually. If we can uh, stop that particular process or we, if we are able uh, to work on that particular step, then there will be no unused and expired medicines at home. Like I'm giving you an example. Uh, suppose uh, if you are having a need of a tablet, uh, let's say it is discipline or it, it is a crossing. Then you go to a retail pharmacist, you ask for a tablet, then immediately uh, he will uh, tell, like if you have change, then I will give you a single tablet. Otherwise uh, keep all these ta uh, 10 tablets. You have to purchase all the 10 tablets. 
so i don't understand actually uh, like if we are having a need of only one single tablet then why we are purchasing this 10 tablets first although these all are otc medicines easily available in the market easily available uh, for a basically common man but the question is that these types of things like especially nsaids non steroidal anti inflammatory drug is the main reason for the accumulation of these types of medication so uh, what is the agenda of today's session we have to determine the reasons behind the disuse or we can say uh, we have to reduce such type of waste if we are able uh, to like uh, know about the ideas know about the factors which are actually contributing in that particular way then this is the only way by which we can avoid unused medication and the expired medicines at home like as i told you like non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs like this uh, covers ibuprofen this covers paracetamol this covers dispirin this covers like nimosulide many more medicines are there here uh, it is a graph there uh, like here you can see Go, like only uh, what we are doing with this unused medicines we are giving this unused medicines uh, only 7% to the ill person means we have unused medicine at home that unused medicine which is of no use for us suppose we are going for a treatment and uh, doctor has recommended a prescription of 7 days but we got relief in only 3 days then what about these 4 days uh, for purchasing a medicine we are going to a pharmacist we are purchasing it from the retail pharmacy shop only but have you ever think what to do with the expired medicine what to do with the unused medicine there is no pharmacist there is no role of a pharmacist there is no role of a government uh, basically uh, the pharmaceutical industry so our aim is to aware that particular thing only so here you can see 58% of the medicines goes down into the flush without knowing these medicine may cause some uh, side effects some basically disturbance in the aquatic life also it will uh, the contaminated water goes inside the earth crust and which can basically disturb the flora and fauna now this uh, non adherence actually lead to the death medication changes and ultimately uh, it will adhere at our home the main problem is that the policies uh, in the india are not there because uh, if we are capable enough to deal with such type of situations then we can make uh, some uh, basically difference but as i told you as a pharmacist we have not studied at all this particular chapter in our curriculum then how a layman or a normal person know about that uh, particular thing which can raise down the problem of uh, like economic as well as the environmental loss <clears throat> this is a smart actually move nowadays what we are observing there is a smart medicine cabinet which actually reduce the medication wastage in the smart medi uh, medicine cabinet uh, there is uh, one thing uh, like uh, expiry date is mentioned and uh, like what we can say uh, the timing of the dose is mentioned the dosing frequency is also mentioned so the smart medicine cabinet is uh, like uh, trending these days so here you will see a uh, picture how medications are wasted actually medications are wasted due to following reasons first one is the household reason second is the help by the healthcare providers or third one is by the regulation because there is no regulatory uh, uh, like process for that particular thing if i talk about the wastage like household waste cover 50% of the medication waste i will tell you all the basically points which actually uh, are there like how we can uh, waste the medicine first one is the non adherence actually non adherence result when a patient does not initiate or continue medication that a provide that a provider has recommended what is the reasons i will tell you one by one number one the scarcity of the patient awareness patient don't know actually like what is the benefit of taking medication in a timely manner he usually skip like morning morning dose or evening dose or uh, the afternoon dose second inconvenient experience if i talk about inconvenient experience Uh, suppose a patient uh, is suffering from type 1 diabetes especially the ch uh, child like uh, if we are giving injection if we are giving insulin to a child then uh, chances are there of pain in the case of a insulin then due to this inconvenient experience 
he may refuse to take uh, medication of insulin so ultimately what will be there there will be adherence at home side effect usually uh, like if any tablet will produce any kind of side effect then immediately we go to the doctor and ask him to change our medication then we don't bother about what is the like what we do with the medicine which is already we have at home then is the low self efficacy like what i talk about uh, like uh, what is a low self efficacy medication might become wasted actually when disused by individual who thinks that they are capable of treating themselves in a better way without taking the medication again this is one of the prominent reason over confidence especially uh, this over confidence is there in the case of a few uh, basically diseases such as hypertension like when we visit to a doctor doctor usually prescribe some medicines now like after taking one dose two dose or three dose or one day two day three day treatment if we are not finding like these tablets are doing some basically changes or some basically uh, curing ourselves then immediately we become uh, over confident like i will do i will basically treat myself with the help of yoga no doubt yoga is a very good thing but the main problem is that what we are doing what uh, like we are accumulating the medicines at home only influence of other household members also like our relatives our family members like uh, they are also a very good doctors apart from the doctors like uh, like we are visiting to any physician uh, like suppose he has prescribed one medication let's say it is paracetamol but what gen- what we do generally like uh, any uh, like educated member in the family he told like uh, he used to tell like i have taken this particular medicine for the treatment of this disease please take this one immediately like uh, we are actually having some influence of that particular member in our family then immediately we go to the market go go to the pharmacist and then purchase another medicine again accumulation is there lifestyle and event if we talk about lifestyle like we are so much busy these days what we are doing busy schedule and a fast course of a life event can same can make some basically a uh, patient miss their medication dose so in that particular case again this is a big problem next is the patient age if you talk about adult then they can keep an eye like uh, when we have to take the medicine at what time at uh, like what dosing frequency we have to take but we talk about geriatric and the pediatric one then again there is a problem because we have to take we have to give the medicine to the patient having the age of like less than 12 years or having a age of like if we talk about geriatric patient then have like it has a dose of medication so these are the few reasons uh, which we can say uh, due to the non adherence now one more is there this is household causes fear of medication wastage fear of medication shortage sorry like some patient become afraid that their medications will be unavailable when they need them and therefore they overstock the medication again there is an accumulation second improper storage of medication inadequate storage may spoil medication which ultimately rendering them invalid for human use therefore they become waste medication misplacement or loss again like if we have purchased one medicine from the market and we forgot like where we have kept at home then ultimately uh, again we have to purchase one new medicine controversial advertisement influence like suppose uh, for, no doubt like if we talk about uh, our i think someone is scribbling on the screen i request uh, please do not uh, scribble on the screen second if we talk about controversial advertisement influence like what we can say advertisement have both positive act and negative influence on the patient they are able to promote medication adherence by reminding patient to take their medicines but advertisement can also promote unnecessarily or harmful prescribing also there are few factors which is uh, related to the health system repeat treatment prescribing over supply of medication can result in the medication accumulation and consequently wastage inappropriate repeated dispensing pharmacists have their own share of medication wastage when they repeat the dispersal of medication 
treatment change when there will be treatment change then accumulation of medicines are there always long prescription duration like if any patient is suffering from some disease let's say epilepsy or or uh, what we can say uh, the treatment is going very long for a 28 days or for a year then chances are there like we skip usually uh, medicines at that particular duration usually the short prescription duration has a good uh, adherence rate in comparison to the long prescription duration now we talk about how unwanted medications are disposed there are few methods like first one is the proper disposal methods and second one is the improper disposal methods this proper disposal methods uh, like if you talk about it should be governed by some healthcare professional healthcare authority but in our country there is no formal rule about how to get rid of this unwanted medications there are some procedure which we are basically uh, like opting these days fda has also recommended some uh, basically guidelines but the guidelines uh, like uh, if we have to follow that particular guidelines i will tell you in brief like uh, after uh, going down to the slide there uh, there are so many things which is actually written in the fda list improper disposal improper disposal is again a challenge because we don't know how to dispose of the medicine then we usually uh, throw them in a sink in a toilet or we can give to a friend or relative also and in india if you talk about the pharmacist and the public dispose of their medication in the sink or in the garbage without knowing like they can harm the aquatic life or they can harm the environment too this raises the alarm for the need of the quick action because in india like if we go to a medical store please ask him like what to do with the expired medicine or if you have medicine at home please ask a pharmacist like this is of no use for me then please take it back he will simply refuse if you are a regular customer of that particular pharmacist then maybe like he will take and he will cut some uh, price also there but my humble request to everyone like uh, these types of medicines are uh, creating a effect on the environment creating an effect on the aquatic life please donate this medicines to the medical store and ask the retailer to like give that particular medicine to the needy person without any cost now the question is how to dispose of unused and expired medicine unfortunately uh, this is a system medicine take back option which is not available in the india disposal in the household trash this we can do at home and flushing certain potentially dangerous medicine in the toilet fda has given some given some list of the medicine which is useful uh, like we can see the name of the medicine in that particular list then we can throw in the uh, we can flush in the toilet now the question is what is medicine take back option medicine take back option is basically preferred to safely dispose of most types of unneeded medicines because we don't know the proper method actually like if we talk about the wasted disposal the garbage which is collected at our home a van is coming to our home for collection of that uh, particular waste and what they are doing with the medicine what they are doing with that garbage you know you don't know actually so main like if we concentrate on one particular thing if you don't know the procedure how to dispose then please give it to someone and it should, it should be done with the help of some local authorities there are generally two kinds of take back option first one is the periodic event and second one is the permanent collection site periodic event includes in this what we can say small number of medicines have specific direction to immediately flush them down the toilet when they are no longer needed and a take back option is not readily available now here uh, this thing uh, we have to basically inculcate local law enforcement agencies may also sponsor medicine take back events in your community suppose uh, you are actually uh, you you know some person who can uh, dispose the medicines because uh, like there are various options like we can say incinerator is there encapsulation is there 
immobilization is there autoclaving is there there are various options available and uh, like in the market uh, there are few agencies which involved in the disposal of pharmaceutical as well as in the uh, as well as for the biomedical waste so local enforcement agencies has to take an initiative to sponsor that type of program if like it will be start na then it will be very beneficial for everyone actually now if we talk about next process which we can say my slide is not moving dr tarun it's moving uh, but it is not visible to me actually oh, okay 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 fine fine no problem no problem uh, now you are on the are... periodic event uh, slide right now uh, yes sir but it is not moving actually okay shall i try from my side if it is not happening at your end actually i have incorporated a few more things in the slides na so that will be older okay one. okay please try now try now yes sir i'm doing sir i'm just stopping the slide sharing yeah yeah maybe you can stop and then start ah, yes yeah. yes yes sometimes technical stuffs are not our in our control <laughs> <laughs> yes sir now it's okay yeah yes local enforcement agencies has to play a important role in that case and consumer can also contact their local waste management authorities to learn about events in that area again permanent collection site what is the role of permanent collection site this is again uh, not in india like drug enforcement administration like if uh, these types of facilities are available in the india then definitely uh, like it should be capable of taking like safely and securely uh, collecting the medicines and disposing of pharmaceutical waste in a controlled manner like in your community if you talk about then authorized permanent collection sites may be retail pharmacies like uh, there is a very good uh, basically point like if we are purchasing the medicines from medical store then medical store might be a place where we have to hang two boxes one is for unused medicine and another is for expired medicine but the question is that like why a retail pharmacist will collect all these medicines so initiative should be there from the pharmaceutical companies also but there is a big problem the problem is that like to uh, dispose of that particular medication the costing of 1 ton is approximately 10000 rupees like for 1000 uh, pharmaceutical or biomedical waste company has to spend how much company has to spend 10000 rupees and if we talk about only delhi delhi is collecting almost 70 ton waste on daily basis i am not talking about india i am only talking about Uh, Delhi only, so you can imagine and you can calculate the figure, ten thousand multiplied by seventy. So companies also need some assistance, some funding from the government. If government will initiate that particular process to treat, then this might be a very good thing. Now, like question might be uh, like in the mind. like is this uh, medication or the unused or the expired medicine medicines are recyclable no the medicines are not recyclable responsible medication disposal is a crucial for human and environment health now what to do with the medicines like uh, in the earlier slide i have mentioned about 
we can uh, like uh, dispose of the medicine in a household trash what to do how to do number 1 mix medicine we have to mix the medicine with the unpalatable substance such as dirt cat litter or you can use coffee grounds and you have to place this mixture in a sealed plastic bag sealed plastic bag is available in the market now the you have to throw the container in your household trash then scratch out all the information but the biggest concern is that you can now uh, put this in, uh, put this uh, bag in a dustbin and dustbin ultimately uh, will go into the uh, garbage van and without uh, like segregation of that particular waste they will uh, throw the medication in a dump yard and uh, you know like uh, what is the uh, condition of the dump yard in the dump yard nearby area of dump yard you might have seen some animals some cows some buffaloes are there like uh, they used to eat that stuff only like if cow buffalo or animals are eating such type of things like the question is there uh, like question is there and it is a big concern only so we have to take certain steps like we have we have to take an initiative we have to take the steps so that the medication should not be accumulated at our home first now the impact of flushing medicines on the environment fda recognize that recommendation to flush certain potentially dangerous medicines when a take back option is not readily available raises question about their impact on the environment and contamination of surface and drinking water supplies this is the step by the fda only and fda believes the chances are there of uh, basically uh, like uh, health hazard to the humans as well as to the environment if we flush the medicine but fda has given some list also that list having some examples like any drug that contain the buprenorphin then phenytoin hydrocodone these types of drug usually contain the opioid these types of medicine we can flush and there are some medicines which do not contain opioids again we can flush these type of medicine but if fda has not given the list for the drugs which are actually not in the list we have to take care of that particular medicines also now this is the drug disposal system i have told you a very simple system impact on environment and aquatic life like if i talk about pharmaceutical waste biomedical waste and the personal care waste they can enter the water supply via sink toilets or the trash disposal and many people dispose of human and pet medication either by flushing them down the toilet or throwing them in a trash what it will do these methods create the potential for harmful chemicals to end up in our lakes rivers uh, streams and groundwater and excess of pharmaceutical and personal care products in the water can harm the local aquatic ecosystem like we all are pharmacists we know there is one source of drug which is known as marine source of drug so if contaminated water will be there then how we can assume the chemical constituent which is present in the uh, that particular uh, crop or that particular plant will be having a good therapeutic action the effects of pharmaceutical can be observed in certain aquatic life such as fish medicines that are flushed down the toilet can end up in the water system and ultimately it will affect the environment so here you can see the picture also like medicines that are thrown in the trash can spend years degrading into the soil and eventually make their way into the ground and the surface water that's why i was talking about the swachh bharat abhiyan swachh bharat abhiyan should not be on the top of the earth only like we have to take certain measures so that we can avoid this thing also if we are doing that particular thing in a better way na so mind it like you will be the great person you will be the responsible person of the society now in addition to effect on the water chemicals from the medicinal weight can also end up in the fertilizer used on the soil there is one technique which is uh, incineration which is uh, like considered as most uh, like environment friendly way of disposing the medication the incineration process is held to strict environmental protection agency regulation and it is done in such a way to minimize the effect of air pollution because chances are there of like uh, having a, a pollution in the atmosphere due to the gases uh, which is 
they are pr produced after burning this is also the only way to guarantee that harmful pharmaceutical product do not enter the water supply now this is one of the most important slide for a pharmaceutical person disposal of pharmaceutical waste several methods of disposal may be used in pharmaceutical waste management as per the fda first one is the incineration or the thermal treatment like if we talk about incineration or the thermal treatment then solid organic waste materials are incinerated or we can say burnt to convert them into the gaseous products and a solid residue in the form of ash, ash will be there this is one of the most effective method and can be used for disposal of solid liquid as well as for the gaseous waste but there are mixed opinions about its danger such as emission of polluting gas and it is one of the best way to dispose hazardous waste such as pharmaceutical as well as the biomedical waste the ash which is produced after incineration must be disposed into a secure landfill and there must be arrangements to prevent gases produced during the combustion this is a big concern actually the gases but nowadays like uh, modern incinerator is there which actually lowers down the emission of the gases second is the chemical disinfection like everybody know what is disinfection disinfection we are we have to use some chemical that can actually uh, like inhibit the uh, growth of uh, basically the chances of contamination so this method involve treating waste material with some chemical which actually inactivate the chemicals or biological materials the effectiveness of the process that entirely depends on the chemical which we are using and the concentration which we are using so we have to take care of the concentration we have to take care of the chemical which chemical we have to use for the disinfection process again one of the prominent method microwaving but like if i talk about pharmaceutical waste then uh, it is uh, like not up to the mark but like what is there in the microwaving process it involves the use of microwave radiation as you know there will be a radiation only which can destroy the infectious material infectious material this method is particularly useful for the biomedical waste and next method is autoclaving everybody know it works on the moist heat sterilization process saturated steam is passed through the waste in the autoclave for a duration at a temperature like everybody knows there are some prescribed temperature uh, and time limit for autoclaving the content for a duration and a temperature which is sufficient to destroy the uh, pathogens in the biomedical waste or we can say in the pharmaceutical waste autoclaving is not the best method for chemical or pharmaceutical waste i must say this thing secure landfilling the waste are disposed by burying in a landfill that has been designed to contain the hazardous waste unless properly designed and operated the landfill may lead to liquid leaching also so again this is a big concern deep burial method deep burial method is also like uh, one of the good method in which deep pits that are at least 2 meters deep deep and one should ensure actually the soil is impermeable in the in these areas if soil is impermeable then it is actually effective and no shallow wells in the area to avoid the risk of water contamination this is like one of the most important method waste encapsulation which is immobilization encapsulation of the waste involves making waste immobile in the form of black in the form of solid block which contained within a steel or plastic drum clean drums are filled to 75% of the capacity with waste the remaining space is filled either with the cement filled with the cement or lime cement or there is plastic foam the drum is then sealed and placed at the bottom of a landfill and fresh solid waste if covered up on the top of it so this is considered as one of the good method and again one more method is there waste immobilization method which we can do at our home only 
what is that method it involves the grinding of pharmaceutical products after removing them from the packing material what we have to do the ground product is then mixed with cement water and the lime and we have to convert it into a paste like a cement paste this paste is transported to a landfill and poured into normal waste where it's set as a solid mass because cement has a tendency to become as a solid mass this we can do this procedure we can do at our home only this is very easy like uh, availability of cement is uh, like uh, not not a big concern and availability of lime is not a big concern availability of lime is not a big concern so what we have to do we have to take the medicine we have to crush the medicine we can uh, make a basically frame in which initial layer is of cement after this what we have to do we have to uh, like the crush medicine we have to spread over that particular uh, basically uh, initial coating after this we have to incorporate one more coating over there then it will uh, like become like a brick only then this brick can be used in the formation of a home also next is the siever treatment liquid drug product can be largely diluted by mixing with water and flush down the siever very slowly in small quantities small quantities of very dilute medicines may be flushed down fast flowing water bodies too so again uh, concern is there so like if i talk about like these are the methods by which we can dispose of the pharmaceutical waste as well as the biomedical waste but the question remain the same like these are having uh, some active pharmaceutical ingredients having some excipients having some solvents having some chemicals having some oils having some organic solvents but like uh, if we are using that particular method if it is going in a good direction that's okay but what to do with this effluent treatment of pharmaceutical waste how it can be done so it must be like what we can say uh, the right way is to remove the toxic material first it can avoid the pollution of the ground water and other water bodies in that particular area so what will be the uh, like model how it will look like an effluent treatment plant consists of the following mode of treatment first one is the preliminary treatment through the filters which remove actually particulate matter and the floating solids and allow only waste water to enter the collection tank now on the second point aeration of the collecting what collected water which flows into the neutralized tank after flowing like reaching to the neutralized tank we have to maintain the ph at a neutral level usually 6 to 7 6.5 to 7.5 is the neutral ph by adding we have to incorporate lime into it we we can incorporate aluminum bisulfate and then water is pumped into the settling tank flocculation and coagulation now first process is uh, removed we have removed the all the solid content we have neutralized the water now what we have to do we have to basically uh, the basically what we can say slug which form actually after treating with the alum or electrolyte we have to collect that sludge also flocculation and coagulation which is achieved by addition of alum potassium or usually known as uh, like we, what we can say fit curry and poly electrolyte solution with continuous aeration coagulation material in the form of sludge settle at the bottom of the tank and effluent is sent to the septic tank now what we have effluent addition of nutrients we have to incorporate to the septic tank to promote growth of bacteria that will bring about biological degradation of organic material which is present in the effluent sludge produced is again there will be again the production of the sludge now what we have to do we have to again separate that sludge and effluent is sent to the active carbon filter to remove any coloring matter like chances are there of any color also now what we have now we have the clear treated waste water which is obtained through that particular process may be used for the irrigation of the plants in any premises similarly this type of treatment we can do in our like we all are pharmacy students 
we have done pharmacy we have used lots of chemicals in our laboratory also so like uh, no one has like bothered about what to do with the chemicals which we are throwing in the sink so if we made this type of model in our lab then it will be a very good thing to save the environment so this is the thing which is suggested by the fda now the question is what we can do we can do as an individual with the unused medicine so my humble request to everyone donation we can donate the medicines in the nearby health camp if you have unused medicine at home what we are doing actually we are throwing in a dustbin we are throwing in a water we are flushing them but if it is unused then please donate to nearby health camps and one more option is there give your medicines to the retail pharmacist or community pharmacist free of cost so that they can provide the medicines to the needy person now the question arises now about why free of cost we have spent so much money in purchasing this medicine but my dear please tell me what you are doing now you are just throwing that particular medicine so like you can utilize this medicine in a better way by giving to the retail pharm uh, pharmacist now it is the responsibility of a pharmacist to provide the medicines to the needy person now what to do with the expired medicine this is all about the unused medicine but expired medicine is of no use then uh, like it is it will be of no use for anyone what we can do like pharmacy institute or the schools may organize best out of pharmaceutical waste and the biomedical waste competition this we have organized in our campus only and believe me students have prepared like beautiful models actually here you can see this is only the syrup bottles and here you can see this is the waste of uh, the tablets which we actually throw or the capsules which we actually throw and here you can see this is again uh, this is uh, not purely the biomedical waste but uh, this uh, wire they have used extra other than this wire like all the pharmaceutical products are there in that in that particular tree and in this uh, they have uh, mentioned all the branches of pharmacy along with the scope of the pharmacy so this is a beautiful idea and you can uh, like uh, if if you can prepare this type of particular model then you can give uh, like uh, give give it to anyone now like this is uh, only about uh, like my uh, thought process which we can do with the expired uh, medicine but like believe me i am single only but together like if we uh, combine together then we will we will be having suppose uh, 200 students have make a registration uh, for that particular event 200 thought process innovative thought process and the creative approach uh, if like they will combine together then definitely Uh, we will have we will be having solution of these types of way cycle types of biomedical and the pharmaceutical waste should not be recycled hello yes dr tarun you are audible okay okay fine 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 sir fine so biomedical waste should not be recycled uh, but it is recycled in the national capital like what they are preparing uh, there is a area in the delhi narela and they are having uh, this biomedical waste treatment plant what they are preparing actually they are recycling the biomedical waste which is actually illegal and what they are preparing they are preparing you will be shocked to know they are preparing disposable plates glasses ice cream cups toys and many such product of daily use so not only the recycling of biomedical waste is illegal but it is life threatening too so we have to take care this is uh, the news which is covered by the uh, g news next if we talk about uh, this is a uh, like uh, some example of uh, haryana uh, karnal karnal is a place we are dumping of biomedical waste is the open continue uh, in the city like if we talk about both private and the government haryana state pollution control board has given a clear cut idea only 200 hospitals are registered with them but more than 600 hospitals clinics and the labs in the district that generate a large quantity of biomedical waste again a major concern and 
you can see like in any nearby civil hospital you can see these type of pictures or any big hospital like when we talk about uh, this is ab- again this about karna i think slides are not moving uh, dr karun it is moving from my side sir <laughs> now okay, again okay. I, think... i can see on my screen it is shocking but true well, we, we cannot the slides are uh, now it is visible yeah okay okay fine sir fine yes uh okay now uh, this is a uh, shocking uh, news again uh, by uh, like uh, i am talking about the capital of india delhi the famous hospitals like lok nayak guru tegh bahadur gb pant and din dayal upadhyay have failed to comply with the waste management norms despite expensive incinerator installed in this hospital what is the reason like i have told you in the beginning the costing is around 10000 rupees per ton and Uh, this is the reporting of five major government hospital rao tularam hospital rajan babu institute of pulmonary medicine and tuberculosis palika maternity hospital and in national institute of immunology have shut down their incinerator owing to their technical reason might be this might be a technical reason but one of the reason is costing also 10000 rupees for one ton and if we talk about only delhi waste i will give you a figure then you will be surprised to know like this type of um expense we have to bear only for the waste then who bothered actually who will bother no one will bother if government is not taking any initiative or we are not actually uh, behaving like a responsible person then who will behave as a responsible person to showcase this type of thing or to get rid of this type of thing so this is a scene um, like this is a report by the times of india and biomedical waste segregation you can see the need of the r and according to the annual report of Uh, this uh, particular thing jo hamara uh, which is in delhi actually 10.7 ton per day biomedical waste is treated in delhi only 10.7 ton but generation is 70 ton so what they are doing with the 60 ton remaining 60 ton again a big question mark according to the media reports various multi specialty hospital generate biomedical waste but are not following the rules to treat this waste government hospitals are also reported to be a turning a blind eye to hazards of biomedical waste by either casually dumping the untreated waste so questions are there of big concern here you can see delhi is producing uh, this is the latest figure during this covid lockdown 11.1 metric ton of covid 19 related biomedical waste only and the number one creator is maharashtra second one is gujarat delhi then tamil nadu then mp india's total 101 metric ton per day i'm talking about only this five uh, this uh, basically india's total is uh, biomedical waste 101 metric per day only which is related to this covid 19 related issues so uh, like what i can conclude uh, from this presentation i must say uh, government has to take some initiative Uh, for the betterment of this particular thing at least we should have the facilities if we have the facilities then uh, we can definitely uh, do some wonders and uh, at least government should fund the government should give some funds to pharmaceutical industry so that they might take some initiative as in csr activity and but like unfortunately this is uh, not the process which is actually uh, adopted these days in our country like in coming future we expect the same from like anyone the local enforcement agencies uh, might be there like to take some action over this and might be like my uh, like together like if we can uh, do some wonders that will be a benefit for each and every person so this will like end up my presentation so if you have any question related to the session then you can please ask manav sir dr tarun yes sir excellent session thank you, thank you uh, there are some questions you know some people have already put in the chat some uh, have put in the youtube channel also and uh, you know during the registration process uh, many questions had come okay so maybe we will uh, go through those questions and in case anybody has in the session any questions then we can uh, continue answering them as well 
so uh, you you may be you can stop the uh, you know slide presentation sure sir sure yeah thank you then uh, we'll just go ahead with the question answer round fine sir thank you thank you so uh, guys any questions please ask uh, put in the chat box and then uh, we'll be more than happy to you know dr tarun uh, excellent speaker and he has been doing lot of good work in uh, the management of pharmaceutical waste uh, he has been trying to uh, you know educate uh, the localities his objective of educate educating and creating awareness is very unique what he feels is you know he does not do the education at the college level he does it at the school level and what he feels is by educating the school children we can educate the entire family that is something excellent right isn't yes, it sir. yes sir. isn't it so if just imagine you know the, we are here you know close to 50 people watching right now live and just imagine if we can uh, connect to you know at least 50 families close to our place and try to educate at least 50 children at least in each family will have at least four to five people uh, in the family right so just imagine the change that we are making you know just by you know educating the small children as to what to do right there are a lot of examples that uh, you know pharmacy professionals are uh, you know doing currently like for example in karnataka if you say in mysore uh, you know a group of pharmacy professionals they have started a initiative called as medbin okay medicine bin okay so what they basically do is uh, you know they collect these unused and expired medicines into two different dust, uh, you know small bins called as medbins and uh, you know the unused medicines are kept in one bin and uh, the expired medicines are kept in one bin right and then they have connections with the retail pharmacies and old age homes and other places and well the uh, where the unused medicines go there and the expired medicines are you know sent to the recycling units now there is another uh, you know uh, uh, company in bangalore which is again doing a good job uh they are collecting all these expired medicines uh you know from various institutions uh pharmacies hospitals companies just imagine you know amazon alone gives about 2 tons of uh, nutraceutical waste every month 2 tons huh? amazon okay. alone in bangalore so i'm sure you know there will be a lot of other places also they might have warehouses and they might be uh, you know collecting so much of waste so you know lot of things can be done see nutraceutical waste there is a group of pharmacists again in bangalore what they are trying is they are using the nutraceutical waste in agriculture because all these nutraceuticals contain sport proteins vitamins and uh, amino acids which are again required by plants right so they have tied up with some horticulture departments and they are trying to experiment this and it is really uh, getting lot of good work done right so anyways uh, this will continue and uh, small initiatives from all of us will make big difference in a longer run so uh, dr tarun there are some questions can we take up now yes sir sure okay so uh, there is one question by tisha yes sir uh, she says can expired medicine be reused again or uh, or expired medicine can again be a regular medicine with any method of preparation Uh, sir like uh, as i have told you in my uh, session yeah. like expired medicine we we don't we basically we can't use actually the expired medicine and we yeah. can't recycle them right so if we are recycling uh, that particular process then we are actually playing with the uh, health of a person Correct. so we should we should not do this uh, in a practice actually yeah 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 and like uh, i have suggested like uh, we can organize uh, some uh, biomedical or pharmaceutical waste competition which is actually the best out of waste competition so right. these type of um, um, basically the process uh, it can be organized in uh, not only in the institution it can be organized in uh, like uh, any society also like rwa is there in any societies like if we can give that particular idea to the rwa like uh, like they are basically like if you talk about any event suppose uh, like uh, 26th of january republic day is there independence day is there like lots of people like usually collect uh, uh, in a particular site so in that they they can take a decision uh, in that particular way so that they can minimize all these activities uh, like of collection or accumulation of medicine at home 
like you have given the example like bangalore is doing a very good thing so awareness should be like uh, around each and every corner of the india like uh, there are some agencies uh, like in the delhi also which is uh, taking care of that particular thing but main thing is coasting who will bother who will actually take this initiative to uh, what we can say incinerate or dispose of all the medicines because the cost is too much and the expense is again too much okay. so if we are get if we are getting some funding from the agency then it will be beneficial otherwise uh, chances are there like it will be like uh, like when we are uh, like when we have listened this lecture uh, we are charged enough now but after a period of time Uh, like uh, when we see like uh, there is uh, no one to contribute or th- no one to like uh, take an initiative then automatically uh, automatically then It we will also it just fades with time yes sir yeah so there there is one question uh, guys any questions you can just you know switch on your mic video and then you can ask directly to dr tarun he'll be more than happy to answer and together maybe uh, you know we can uh, answer your questions not a problem anybody has any questions omesh uh, you have raised your hand do you want to ask anything omesh okay i think he's not asking so anyways uh, there is another uh, you know question by naman gupta he says if anyone does not know about the medicine then how can the categories or medicines whether harmful or good i'm not sure what this means but i think it you know, in basic simply means that you know if somebody does not know about the medicine how to categorize whether it is harmless or you know a good medicine so basically it you know the onus lies on a pharmacist uh, you know to educate the you know people about the medicines and we can always do a lot of good work in this regard right uh, here is the role of community pharmacist or a clinical pharmacist is here yeah uh, we should actually educate train or counsel the patient in a in a way so that uh, like they uh, will not take such type of medicine if like expiry date is not there like like when we are purchasing any medicine we should firstly check all these things like batch number is there expiry date is there like batch like batch number and expiry this will be like a very good situation very good thing uh, for you actually right now what we are observing uh, like when we go to a, a retail pharmacy then they actually uh, issue a bill in that bill they clearly mention all these things and right. you have to keep that bill so that like if any problem will be there you can ask that particular company also you can complain to some uh, like uh, regulatory agencies also like i have taken this particular medicine there is basically a call back option also like uh, cdsco has a call back option if you find any difficulty any side effect then uh, there is some pharmaco vigilance program also which is run by the ipc also uh, indian pharmacopeil commission office then you can report actually if you find some kind of side effects excellent so uh, there are some more questions uh, will you know how long medicine can be used after after expiration date so oh. like if i talk about uh, the duration uh, actually uh, the company if has uh, given some expiry then uh, my humble suggestion is that we should not uh, like uh, perform any kind of practical to our life only Correct. we should simply avoid like as a pharmacist uh, what is my uh, basically my aim is to educate the people my aim is to aware the people like as a pharmacist if we know like uh, chances are there like 90% uh, like if we talk about shelf life or expiry then 90% is there so when we are pharmacist we know that particular thing you are a budding pharmacist if you are if you are doing pharmacy then you should also uh, take this particular step in a habit that we should not use any medicine if it is expired or if it is near to uh, like november 2020 is written or december 2020 is written no problem up to 31st december and like 10% is also there but you should avoid actually yeah so uh, there is one more question by abhishek he says what should we do with the unused medicines unused medicine you can donate to any rotary club you can donate to any uh, like uh, uh, social uh, ngos you can donate to any uh, needy person uh, you don't have actually uh, uh, to check the prescription you don't have the right or you are not the concerned person to check the prescription 
but in the prescription uh, if you will find you are like uh, you are, if you are a pharmacist then you can check like this this is the medicine which is actually written in the prescription and i am a pharmacist i can see like this is the same medicine then you can donate that particular medicine to the person only if you are not a pharmacist then please go to a pharmacist and donate your medicine to that uh, pharmacist only yeah or donate to any health camp see one more question is by mohammed idris he says if a person has taken an expired medicine by mistake yes what should he she do after realizing few minutes later that he has taken the expired medicine i think he should uh, he has to visit a doctor first immediately uh, because, uh, because like chances are there like uh, it may produce any harm effect and chances are there it may not produce any kind of action so uh, you have to consult immediately a con- uh, basically consultant a physician which has actually prescribed that, that particular medicine yeah like he may, he may he may tell you like you have to do gastric lavage or something else like that is the call of a doctor only we as a pharmacist we can only educate or we can counsel the patient so there is one more question by azma what do companies do after collecting back the expired medicine during nutraceuticals specifically nutraceuticals Uh, actually i am not uh, concerned about the nutraceuticals but the methods which i have told you like mm-hmm. the incineration method is there auto cleaving is there then immobilization is there like these are the various techniques uh, which actually the pharmaceutical companies are doing and uh, they are doing in a better and effective way the procedure is there but that is only for the pharmaceutical companies like i have a simple thing i, I want to tell you one simple thing like in a medical store if any medicine will expire then they will take back actually from the retailer but there is no scheme to take it back from the patient from the consumer yes from the consumer yes so is it uh, this is for everyone na if this is for everyone then there will be no problem then there will be no like need of this particular session only yeah in fact in um, in karnataka what this company uh, when there is one company what they are doing is they have tied up with all these retailers and they charge uh, you know the retailers on collecting this expired medicine and what they have started doing is they have a recycling unit and uh, disposal plant and they uh, give a certificate of disposal to this uh, retail pharmacies now what happens is uh, you know they uh, retail pharmacies can show that amount as a loss okay right that is one thing that they are doing and secondly uh, retail pharmacies won't bother if you know patient comes in and then he tries to deposit back the unused and the expired medicine right and locally many of this small uh, you know community pharmacists what they have started doing is i told about the med bins so similar initiatives they have started doing and which has uh, given very good result and outcome and in pharmacy colleges also you know some uh, pharmacy colleges uh, they have started they have opened model pharmacies so the objective of model pharmacies is to you know uh, uh, educate uh, the pharmacies uh, pharmacists about the various kind of doses which are present and all about uh, you know things that can be done uh, with the unused and expired medicines so this is also helping them uh, you know by the time they come out of their uh, uh, you know degree and graduation and they plan want to plan uh, something in retail pharmacy or business they would have a fair idea of what has to be done with the medicines so this is also helping a lot uh, i think we should as you know educators in pharmacy colleges we should have a plan of opening some model pharmacies or if not at least a uh, regular tie up with some of these pharmacies wherein we can uh, educate them about uh, various dosages the expiry uh, aspects and also about the recycling methods which can be adopted right so something yes. we should plan so there are no other questions uh, dr tarun so we can actually sir uh, i think uh, here is uh, one of my teacher is there oh okay uh, dr saurav energy oh very nice are you, are you there sir okay i think sir has left uh, sir okay. has written message so okay okay i thought okay not a problem not a problem he might have left yes, yes yes i can't see him okay. there is one uh, gaurav saini ha uh, he is also uh, like uh, 
from our department only oh very nice he, he very is nice. taking he is taking care of training and placement here excellent so maybe we can connect because i keep getting lot of inquiries from different pharma companies on uh, you know various opportunities so right now also we are recruiting for uh, one company in bangalore okay so maybe we can discuss so anyways that's okay uh sir some people use medical drugs as addicted form can how can we uh, be aware of the side effects and bad uses this is by mr naman gupta yes again uh, naman this is a, a basically uh, of a discussion of a community pharmacists we uh, we have to cre- uh, create some awareness program actually like uh, by having uh, some rallies or by conducting uh, some guest lectures expert lectures in the nearby community so he will guide in a better way like which type of medicine like if you talk about like in the pharmacology you have studied about various side effects of drugs so as a pharmacist if you know that particular thing then you have to educate the public you have to educate the community like uh, there are various drugs like uh, which are teratogenic in nature like uh, there are some uh, women in the villages they don't know like uh, how to use this particular medicine and they are taking the medicine without the prescription so it's our duty actually to educate the public if we know then there will be a like a, a good uh, image of uh, usl also in the society right absolutely okay yeah he says yes sir <laughs> nice okay. fine sir so there is no other question uh, if it will be there then uh, i have my email id uh, like uh, tarun.virmani at the rate mn.edu.in i will type here so if you have any question then please uh, write me then i will try to answer each and every query okay so there is another one more question by uh, satish um, it is the, the question has come from youtube okay he says as the expired medications contains leftover apis can't we recycle the medicines you want to take this question uh, dr tarun or yes. you want me to answer Uh, sir actually uh, we are talking about the 10% remaining 10% only na yeah so uh, like how much will be the extraction cost and uh, like uh, this you have to understand actually uh, like we are uh, as a pharmacist we should have to take care of three things uh, it should be sst it should be sasta it should be sundar and it should be tick out <laughs> like uh, and uh, like what what about uh, the first uh, two Uh, f- uh, first one sasta it should not be cheap actually because the method which we have like uh, carried out in the extraction of that particular potency of that particular medicine will cost you more then uh, again this will be a big challenge for the pharmaceutical industry yeah yeah so actually there there was one um, you know formulation and development uh, you know one of my college junior actually he tried this so he was you know experimenting with uh, multiple expired medicines and he was trying to extract the apis the active pharmaceutical ingredients the success rate is yes it is there but uh, you know it is not so great because you know we have to do a reverse engineering of the entire process and we have to identify uh, what method works it is all trial and error method so unless we have a big laboratory and set up maybe at the college level we can do some experiments to try this and we can ex- try to extract the apis of course the apk apis will always be effective right it is all the excipients which uh, normally get expired so maybe if we can do this it will be a excellent work and um, you know self dep- dependency of apis in india would again you know be a big you know it has it will have a good big role to play right yes, so anyways so. let's see let's see what we can do and how we can uh, do better things so there is no other question sir i have one more slide to show actually oh that uh, that, that that will be a question mark for each and every one only this uh, is yes slide. yes 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 please please go ahead please uh-huh. go ahead uh, please so this will be our next session actually that yes, is what um, we wanted to say yes sir please enable me sir um, yeah yeah i have just enabled you yeah okay. so this is a big question mark for you yeah correct <laughs> that It's is about the electronic yes yes electronic. and most of us are not aware of what to do about this yes 
in in some states yes there is a, a significant yes. work that people are doing but most of the states it is not done most of the people are not aware of what has to be done main because... thing is awareness on this awareness yes we have okay. to basically create an awareness if we are successful awareness. to a, like only 20% extent na then uh, like uh, we have done our duty like as you have rightly said like we have to educate a family if we have to educate a family about that particular thing we have to educate a child only like if we are educating a child then definitely a family will be educated and like this type of session if you have like uh, if you want to uh, listen or you want to like uh, use this ppt then i will share to the sir a uh, sir has actually uh, this ppt like if someone ask uh, sir uh, then please uh, give that ppt to the students or like to the pharmacists so that they can also aware these types of program in the nearby areas or nearby colleges or nearby schools no i think you rightly said dr tarun you know if if there are you know about 50 pharmacists to which uh, you know who attended this session today if each one of us can you know at least in our own village yes if each one of us can you know take up one of this uh, these slides and educate the students in the school probably it will make a big big difference and maybe it will be one shot uh, you know technique to educate the entire village in just one go right and you know children are you know children won't leave the parents yes in case they are aware about these harmful effects and the problems associated with expired medicines they are not going to leave the family they they'll ensure that you know right things are done at the family level so if you are able to change a family then our life becomes much more relevant right we can change yes, the society in fact just by changing you know few families so thank you so much uh, dr tarun excellent session and nice interacting with you my and, pleasure sir uh, we'll continue bringing uh, you know good uh, good sessions for our pharmacy community and we'll discuss offline as to what we can plan for the next of course e waste is something which on the is which is on the cards but apart from this uh, there will be a lot of other sessions also which we can help uh, our pharmacy professionals uh, next week we have one session on preclinical uh, studies the uh, role of preclinical studies and career opportunities in preclinical that is uh, you know it will be done by one of the ceos of a company in bangalore uh, his name is dr ravindra he is a ceo and md of invivo biosciences so that is on 12th i'll be sharing the details uh, with you also sure and let's see if we can attend and you know we can uh, get something you know by spending one hour probably we'll definitely learn something new and uh, each learning adds value to our life you know professional life definitely for sure so thank you so much dr tarun thank you all the participants for uh, sparing this time with us and we hope you know we are able to add some value to your uh, professional life and personal life and uh, please, uh, please feel free to you know connect with either dr tarun or myself on any uh, topic that you want us to cover in future sessions or if you want to interact one to one uh, we you are most welcome we will be more than happy to connect with you and see how we can help each other thank you so much uh, everyone dr tarun with your uh, you know approval can we end the session dr tarun if you are okay sh should we end, end the session you are not audible i think your yes, voice yes sir yes yes okay yes. fine no. dr tarun you have a final word uh, what to say uh, yes sir uh, like my simple humble submission to everyone uh, to basically uh, if you have uh, listen uh, this uh, presentation seriously then kindly start uh, like awaiting the people only and if you need any kind of support any kind of help from my side or from sir side then we are always there most welcome anyways uh, all the participants and everyone who attended the today session and even those who have not attended the session the video will be there on youtube channel the link is already sent to you yesterday night itself please watch the video a recording of the video will be there and try to educate few people and try to make a difference in case you have any questions or you want any other help from both of us please feel free to connect with us and we'll be more than happy to help you out 
thank you so much uh, dr tarun thank you have a pleasant day thank you uh, thank you so much okay sir thank you so much thank you so thank much you. everyone okay. thank you nice